Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. It's been somewhat of a yearly tradition to do these the good, the bad and the ugly videos and this year is no exception. 2024 has been an interesting year so far, let's talk about it and how things have changed within the company since the last year. As usual, we start with the good. And this year, like the previous year, we've seen really positive movement in the stock price. At the time of making this video, we're up 60% and damn does it feel good. Two years ago, when we were at all-time lows, the situation felt really dire and desperate, but now, with us constantly setting all-time highs, the outlook and positivity about the company has definitely increased. I get the sense that myself and my other coworkers are more at ease now, and are more focused on doing great work and less about our financial situations. I'm definitely kicking myself for selling in the past and thinking about all the gains I missed out on, but I suppose that's just how it is sometimes. You win some, you lose some. If I had a crystal ball and could predict the stock market, well, I'd be a trillionaire by now and definitely wouldn't be making this video. All in all, I look more favorably at the future of the company and am more satisfied with my compensation now and how it's been growing as the stock increases. My biggest concern now is actually about the tax man who loves to steal a majority of my income, but that's a rant for another day. The next great thing that's happened this year has been a continued focus internally on efficiency and making developers more productive. I can't really go into the details of the efforts here, but at a high level, there's been a lot of emphasis put on how to improve developer velocity increasing and reducing friction points. I've seen a marked improvement in the speed and reliability of key developer tools and platforms, which has made life oh so much smoother. For a company that puts so much focus on moving fast and shipping code, it's really nice to see the effort is being put in to make sure that our infra and tooling are stable and well maintained and improving our lives instead of making them harder. One area where this is especially true is in the integration of AI into our workflows. While I still don't trust AI generated code in VS Code, I, and I personally find it a bit more of a detriment than a positive, the rollout of our own internal ChatGPT-like AI assistant has been a really positive experience. Using this has been a blessing for my workflows. Things that used to take me five to 10 minutes to try to find a stack overflow solution for or would force me to go read the documentation can now be done with a simple question to the AI assistant. It's especially nice um, that it's trained on our internal into code base and it can sometimes give accurate and relevant code. For those little things that you have done a thousand times but sometimes you always forget the syntax for, it's great because it can easily provide you with basically working code that you can copy and paste. Or for those kind of questions where you feel embarrassed to keep asking your coworkers because you really should know the answer by now, well, don't worry, the AI doesn't really hold any grudges. There's still a long way for it to go and the integration of it into our workflows is not complete, but it's been amazing so far and I'm really excited to see where things will go from here and what they're going to build going forward. With the good out of the way, let's get on to the bad. Luckily this year we haven't had to deal with any sort of market turbulence or layoffs, but I guess there's still a lot to complain about. Maybe this is my personal situation, but I do get the sense that my work-life balance has gotten worse over the past year. I think with the layoffs of 2022 and 2023, which shook things up internally and reset focus areas, employees are now more on edge with respect to making sure they deliver and get good performance ratings. We've always had this unfortunate reality that in every performance cycle, they need to put some percentage of people in the category of meets most expectations, which is seen as a death sentence in terms of your employment. Not only is your bonus in your RSU refresher for that year going to get cut by almost half, but it puts you straight into the firing line for being pipped or offered severance to leave on your own. This has always been a part of the performance game at Meta, but in recent years it's bubbled up to the surface and it's much more prominent. The threshold didn't used to be 13-15%, to 15 if I recall correctly maybe it was 9-11, to 11, and you had the sense that they were a little bit more lenient. For most teams now, you're looking at probably one to two people who need to get this rating and it causes a lot of fear internally. I get the sense now more than ever that coworkers are looking over their shoulders and trying to make sure that they are outperforming their coworkers and that they aren't the one that takes the hit. Of course, with everyone doing this, you get to a situation where everyone's now trying to work more and to stay at the top of the pack in order to not fall behind. It's a Hunger Games scenario and it's really shit. I don't think it's gonna get better anytime soon. I think we'll end up getting squeezed even harder as time goes on, especially with the stock price rising and rising, no one wants to lose their golden ticket, so it will artificially force employees to push themselves longer and harder to stay in the game. On a day-to-day -day basis, this seems to manifest itself in an ugly way, 
or if people know they need to deliver impact and results, they more closely guard their projects. People are less willing to collaborate and share the work when they know it could reduce their personal impact at the end of the year come performance evaluation time. It goes against the culture of the company, but given the circumstances, it makes sense that people want to protect their slice of the pie and not let anyone else take it from them. At the end of the day, we're all just animals, and this is ingrained in our DNA over millions and millions of years. So don't expect to change anytime soon. It's a high stress, high reward environment. The stock is up, paychecks are up, but the bullshit and workloads are up too. That's just the way the cookie crumbles. Let's revisit this in next year's video and see how things progress. Now, let's talk about the ugly. One silver lining for this year is that the ugly is more on the level of conspiracy theories than actual reality, so please take all of this with a grain of salt and put your tinfoil hats on. The first point is related to the stock price and the ramp up in hiring. There's some thinking out there that since the sh stock has shot up so high and so fast, this has made a lot of employees very expensive for the company. In 2022 and 2023, stock grants were given in the range of, I think, 180 and 270, respectively. This means that the value of those grants has gone up significantly, and this has increased the amount that the company has to pay out. There's some whispers that it's actually cheaper to lay off a ton of people and rehire new hires with fresh grants that are based on a higher price than it is to keep those people with the ballooned value of their grant. From a purely logical and investor-pleasing perspective, this makes 100% sense, but I think for them to pull off something as cruel as this would absolutely destroy all employee trust in the company, shatter morale for anyone who's still employed, and brand the company with a black spot they'll never get rid of. In theory, it's possible, but I don't see it happening. Or maybe that's just hopium. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. The second one has to deal with recent events in the United States. Unless you've been in a coma or you live under a rock, you may have noticed that this teeny little eensy weensy event uh, occurred called the presidential election. Now, I'm not going to discuss the outcome or provide any opinions on the matter, but what I will say is that the victor is not exactly the biggest fan of Meta. Again, I'm not going to go into any details here, so I don't start a flame war in the comments, but let's just say that there's definitely the potential for friction between the administration and Meta due to, how can we say this politely? historical misgivings. Anyway, there is the possibility that there might be some more regulatory pressure on Meta going forward, coupled with the potential of talks of a TikTok ban being scrapped or reversed. This will encourage more competition in the social media space and basically not let Meta have what, let's be honest, is a monopoly. Politics aside from the financial aspects, if there's any sort of showdown here, it will negatively affect the stock price, and that's really what I'm more focused on. Any sort of tangles with the government will not send us to all-time highs, I'm sure of that. Perhaps not much will change, given the size of Meta and the potential negative consequences of direct confrontation. Most likely, both sides will just pay lip service to each other, bark at one another from time to time, but ultimately not rock the boat too much, and hopefully not much will change. Of course, it has the possibility to all go south, but let's keep an eye on the situation and see how it goes. And there we go. Another year, another video. That's been my the good, the bad, and the ugly at working at Meta in 2024. It's been a great year, and it's had its ups and downs, but I'm still glad to be here and still in the game. I deeply enjoy my job, and I don't want to see myself going anywhere anytime soon. Whatever 2025 has in store, I'm ready for it, and I will navigate those seas, whether they be stormy or smooth. That's all for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, why not leave a like and a comment to help with the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you in the next one.